Oh, Steve White, Steve White's 89. Well, I had to talk about the whole John Campier thing. It's kind of interesting. Um, God. John Campier, I, I only found out about him through um, Robert Meyer Burnett, because I used to watch his show, and he kind of disappeared and was off working for this other guy, and I'm like, why are you working for this guy? Why aren't you focusing on your own channel? I didn't realise he was being paid, because, you know, I didn't really think of that. Because, um, you know, some people, YouTube is a serious full-time job and they treat it like a proper TV production and they have writers and editing staff and so forth, you know, YouTube really shouldn't be done like that. YouTube should just be like this, just people doing their own thing from their houses, basically. Um, once you get into scripting and having people editing things and payroll and everything, it just becomes like a TV show and it doesn't have the spontaneity. Once you have sponsors and, and once money gets seriously involved, people lose their objectivity and so forth. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I didn't really know much about him, but um, I did start to watch his separate little videos just on news items and stuff like that. I'd never watched his actual um, show, just some of the, because just I would see individual things about stories that interested me and that's it. Um, and then there was, there was some drama about him firing Robert Meyer Burnett and firing someone else from his show and um, a lot of criticism. And then I realised he actually had people trolling him seriously. There was um, like a group called, um, what is it, Scream Fiends or something? Um, what is their name? They're up on there now. Yeah, Screen Fiends. Um, all they do is bitch about him. They've got like 1,000 something, 1,300 subscribers or something. They're, they're smaller than me, um, <laughs> which is pretty sad. Um, and they just seem to be total bottom feeders that just sort of make videos about him and bitching about him and other people. Um, it's pretty sad. And there's also another group called Exposing John Campier. It's like a whole YouTube channel just about him or something. And I'm like, seriously? I don't think he warrants it. Like, I don't think he warrants that much attention, and, and these people do seem to be just bottom feeders. They don't seem to have anything interesting about them, so they just talk about more interesting people and criticise them and attack them and be negative. And so I, I sort of heard some criticisms of him through them. I didn't really take them very seriously, but then I saw him announcing that he was changing his show. Um, that lasted a day. Um, basically, he, he said, look, it's taking most of my energy to do the John Campier, daily John Campier show. And those long format videos aren't getting the same sort of attention from YouTube. They're not pushing them as much. And basically 20% of our views or money or whatever is coming from those. Whereas we're putting in 80% of the effort was the example he gave. So it's like, well, why would I do that? So he just decided he was just going to make, because normally they clip little segments out of those videos. He was going to remove them and just start doing, um, just the little segments on their own and not do the actual show. Well, his subscribers or the people who pay for his content on pay, um, what's it called? Um, Patreon or whatever, um, or whatever other groups he's got people paying for the content, they, they were not happy and they pretty much lost their you know what, collective you know what, and they were getting, sending him some fairly nasty messages and so forth. Um, cause I thought he was going to go to, um, just doing that show as a um, podcast, but um, basically he was just trying to drop the show altogether and just do the shorts and some of the other um, programs they have on the channel, like they have live mic or something where people just, they're just responding to people's messages, it's just a conversation and stuff, and, and live sort of movie sort of reviews when he walks out of a cinema basically and does a review. So I've seen him do stuff like that. I mean, I said he was going to, he said he was going to do stuff like that. But um, basically he's just like, look, fine, you don't want the content, you don't like it, fine, I'll stop making it. Um, and that's it. No more John Campion show, no shorts, no nothing. Now, apparently he's going to do a couple of editorials a week and he's going to do, um, I think he's still going to do the live mic, but I'm not sure if he's doing that as a podcast or an actual on-camera show because he is only doing the John Campus show. He's, he's, he's basically doing a podcast and that's it. Um, no John Campus show, no live show. It's going to be a podcast. And his, his fans are n not going to be happy about that. Um, he's l losing subscribers and it's just kind of fascinating to see someone who is very successful. I mean, he doesn't 
he's not growing as fast as the trolls and the chuds and the people that all they do is play um, with the pop culture wars and everything. Um, he does a serious show, but he took it a bit too seriously. He was producing his show like it was a TV show. It's like he wanted to be on TV, but he wasn't on TV, so he made his TV show like, I mean, his YouTube show like a TV show. Um, production values, he apparently had really expensive cameras and lighting and a whole crew and just a whole bunch of people. And was, I was watching it, like some of the shorts, I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow, this must be really expensive. Like, yeah, so... If he hadn't done all that, maybe he could have afforded to do whatever he wanted and not had to sort of um, justify the, the expense and the effort and everything. And but it does seem like a bit of a, a bit of a slap in the face to his fans. It's like, oh, you don't you don't like my content? I take it away then. Like he's going to take his ball and go home. I'm like, really? Um, I was just kind of shocked at now. I mean, I don't have I, I I don't have a real YouTube channel. I have like a blog. Vlog. I keep saying blog. Vlog. It's a video log, not a... whatever. Um, but even, like, okay, I've had a couple of busy periods that didn't last very long, but um, it is a bit of effort, so I can kind of imagine if you're doing a live show and videos that you're editing. So I don't edit my videos, I just talk to the camera, that's it. I don't use footage or anything. It doesn't take me very long to do a video. And even doing this, you know, does take some effort so I can imagine how much effort it takes to produce um, multiple shows um, and so forth. So I, I can't, he keeps saying that he's tired, he's been talking about retiring um, and people have sort of been commenting on that but um, yeah it's, it's, it does seem pretty brutal to just cut your show and change it overnight without really giving anyone a warning and then when people react badly just go that's it I'm done I'm out I'm not doing any more goodbye um, it seems like a really pissy um, way to deal with your show and your fans so um, yeah I just I thought it was interesting I mean um, I would never want to do what he's doing I mean I would never want to um, have like a whole crew of people and, and just you're basically, like I said, producing a television show um, for YouTube. The reason why I like doing this is just because I just have to put, switch the camera on and just talk. And whatever interests me, whatever is bothering me, whatever I want to share, I can just do. I don't have to worry about the sponsors and how much it's going to cost and budget and, you know, paying this person, paying that person, who's going to, you know, having someone write a script and editing and all this stuff. It's, it takes the spontaneity out of it. It takes the it's not really personal, you're not just talking to the camera like you're talking to a person. Um, and that's one of their criticisms, I think, is that a lot of people like the live shows because they would um, deal with questions in real time and stuff like that. And it was more like a more um, involved in the community, those sort of videos were, as opposed to just sort of having something produced and then given to you sort of as a finished product and it's all polished and not really spontaneous or real. Um, so yeah, I, I'm kind of glad I'm small, that I don't have to worry about any of that. Um, I can answer all my comments. Um, I don't have to worry about sponsors and, you know, um, just catering to this base or that base or having to maintain this level of, you know, the people who get tens of thousands of views and that, I mean, they need, like, they, they need to keep producing those sort of videos so they get that sort of um, sort of level of viewership because, you know, they, they're used to the money, they get used to the money, so, um, yeah, I, I just had to comment on it, I just thought it was a really petty, pissy thing to do, the way, and the way he did it, um, the way he did the whole thing, um, firing people, changing the show, just overnight, expecting people to adapt and not react, and then when people make negative comments, he just takes his ball and goes home, it just seems really unprofessional for someone who has been promoting himself and sort of pro pro projecting himself as this sort of serious sort of um, professional um, yeah so I just sort of thought that was weird but I do think probably the good thing about this is if he does sort of make a lot less content maybe some of the smaller bottom feeding channels that um, are just commenting on and criticizing him criticizing him will go away I don't know they just seem kind of sad but um, I'm gonna go feel free to share like comment subscribe let me know what you think. Thanks.